Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial we're going to use GIMP image manipulation program to create a double exposure image. So in this folder I have these three pictures. I have this background, I have a picture of this lady and we want to combine these images together to create a double exposure and the final image will look similar to this one. Here you can see. So to do this, we'll open up GIMP software. You can go to Google, just type in GIMP 2.8 and you can download the software for your Mac, PC, Linux. And the first thing we'll do is drag and drop the background into the canvas and we we'll drag and drop the picture of the lady also into the canvas. And when you drag and drop both images, you'll see there's two different layers. If you can't see this layer section here, you need to go to Windows dockable dialogues and select layers here and to see the toolbox just go to uh, click on this toolbox option here that will show this toolbox option here and if you go to dockable dialogues and then tool options we'll make sure you can see this tool option section here so there's three sections that we need to be seeing on the screen so in the toolbox we want to select um, the resize tool the scale tool here because I want to resize this image because it's a bit too big. I'm going to hold down the control key and I'm going to use my mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit. So you can use the holding down the control key and the mouse wheel you can zoom in and out. And I'm going to click on the picture. I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard again and I'm going to left click and drag to resize the image from the top and then from the bottom here to something like this. This will be fine. I'll click the scale it's going to rescale it now. Okay. So I just want to sort out the alignment of this image a little bit. And we're going to click on the alignment tool here. We're going to click on the picture. And then we're going to select this option here, distribute horizontally. And then we're going to select this one to distribute it to the bottom. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is click on the move tool and then we want to right click on the lady, the picture of this lady and we want to duplicate the layer. So we've got two copies and we make sure the first layer is selected. We know that because it's highlighted blue. So depending on which layer is selected, it will show it in blue. I'm going to make sure I've selected the top layer here. I'm going to go to colors and then desaturate and click on luminosity and all that's basically doing is making the image grayscale. I'm going to go back to colors and I'll go to curves and I want to drag this pointer across until the image is mainly black not too far if you go too far then it starts to cause problems so you want to make sure it's something like this because if you go too far it will just go white basically um, and really what you want to see you see the eyelashes here, we want to make sure we see them clearly. If you go a bit too far, they start to uh, distort a little bit. So we want to, we want that, about here is going to be fine. So we click OK. And we're going to click on the paintbrush tool. And let's uh, zoom in a little bit so we can see the image a bit clearer. You can see all these this is uh, the white content in here along the side here and right here we need to make that all black so to do that let's just resize our paintbrush make sure black is selected here on the swatch you can switch them around by clicking this little arrow here and in the paintbrush we're going to select one of these two so we'll select uh, this one here the second one across that one Okay, we're just going to paint all of this black. And we're going to resize the paintbrush a bit more. And zoom in and just get this all black here. And we can hold down the middle mouse button and we can drag across. When we hold down the middle mouse button, we can move across the canvas to the other side. And we can paint this part here black as well. 
you make a mistake and you go off the screen, press Control Z on your keyboard to undo. Okay, this looks pretty good. So we click on the move tool again, and we're gonna to go to colors, <coughs> and we're gonna select invert. And that just basically changes it from black and white to white and black, we just reverse it. And we can still see a few small problems here. Can you see here, it's, it's black. Um, so we'll click on this tool here and we'll switch it around to white. We'll click back on the paintbrush and we just paint this in white so that should be fine <coughs> so <coughs> I can either go to edit and select cut or I can press control X so I'm going to press control X on my keyboard and then I'm going to click on this lady a picture of the lady here I'm going to right click and add a layer mask. And then I'm going to say white full opacity. Select this option. I'm going to click add and then I'm going to press control V. <coughs> this will basically remove the white background from our picture, you can see. I'm going to go to select and then what should we do? Actually, what we'll do, first thing we'll do is we're going to click on this anchor option and this will anchor our floating layer selection down to the layer below. Okay. So <clears throat> the next thing we want to do, we can just hide this layer now. I'm going to click on the background, and we're going to right click and we're going to add a layer mask here as well. Same one, white full opacity, click add and then we're going to press control V again. Okay, and we're going to click on the anchor tool to anchor that layer down as well. And then we're going to right click on this, this layer, this uh, section here, this layer, and we're going to say apply mask apply layer mask and we're going to do the same with the top one apply, apply layer mask and we can show this top image again now you can see this slightly misaligned so we click on the background <coughs> and we click on the move tool and what we can do is we really just want to make sure this background is aligned I'm using the arrow keys on my keyboard, so I'm just using the arrow key to move the image down. And we just want to make sure the background and the foreground image, these two images are matched correctly. Sometimes it might be slightly offline, but this looks okay. So I want to make sure the background layer is selected now. I'm going to click on the eraser tool here, and we're going to make the eraser quite large. And we just want to get rid of all of this background here that we don't need. Make sure you've selected the background here, yeah? And make sure you don't go over the picture of the lady. Just We just want to get rid of this background part here. So let's make this a bit smaller. All of this stuff here we want to get rid of. And to make this job... <clears throat> slightly easier what we can do is add a new layer and we just make it a white layer and click OK and we'll just drag this layer to the bottom or we can use this downwards arrow green arrow and then we can see if we've got any problems here when we actually what you must make sure is when you drag this layer down make sure you select the background layer and then as we're deleting it, we can see if there's any problems or anything that we've missed. We 
ikke mig i så små spidbygger. Just be a bit careful when you get to the top here. We'll make our brush much smaller. So we don't end up deleting or erasing a part of the image we don't want to. So just be a bit careful up here. That should be good. <clears throat> so we can click on this um, white background layer. We can delete it now. We don't need it. So the next thing I want to do is take this background layer that we had before and drag and drop that back into the canvas. And we want to make sure the back, this background layer is sitting at the bottom layer. So we're going to click the green arrow to make it on the, to bring that layer down. Okay. <clears throat> we're going to go into, um, click on the picture of the lady. And let's just check one thing here carefully. Let's click on the, the background layer. If you notice, it's a bit hard to see, but can you see this white line here? We need to get rid of that. So to do that, we're just gonna make we're gonna make sure we've selected uh, the picture of the lady. We're gonna go to the eraser tool. And we're going to just draw around this yellow dotted line. This will just get rid of that white line. So it's gone now. Okay. So we've got our background, we've got the picture of the lady, and behind the behind her we have um another picture of the lady with this uh cutout here. So we're gonna click on the first layer, the lady, and we're gonna go to normal. So here you've got these different modes, and we're gonna select dodge. And you can see the effect that comes out. So it's just combining the two images, but we've still got our background, original background there. I wanted that to be there. We can click on other options here. So you need to experiment. There's other options like there's a subtract. There's all these different types of selections here that you can experiment with. You just need to find one that you like. And I think... Uh, This is the one that I prefer. So, all we really need to do now is just save our work. And uh, let's call this double. And now we can export the file.
and we're really done. We've got our picture. Here it is. That's our double exposure image. <clears throat> you can find many more tutorials on YouTube on how to do this. There's different styles and different techniques. So some work better than others. Uh, you need to really experiment. And when you're selecting um, your different types of images, if it's a dark background, I tend to find dodge works better. So if the background is quite dark, dodge seems to work better for me. But if it's quite a light background, then multiply seems to work well as well. It really depends. So this is just a basic overview tutorial of double exposure. I hope you find it useful. You can experiment with this with different images and have a good play around and see see what you know what creativity you can come up with. Um, okay, that's the end of this tutorial. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.